Welcome inside episode 612 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Laleem's Martian down in the streets of downtown Ottawa. And with me as always is Brandon Piller in the Blue Mountains in Collingwood. And Pilsy, it's been a bit quiet in old Sens land these days. And we're without Ross Levitan once again. Um, but let's let's hear what you have in store for the listeners today. Yeah, well, we got a massive contract to discuss in the Jonathan Huberdeau deal. The Calgary Flames got to be very excited about that one. We put out a mailbag tweet. Thank you to the listeners for hitting us up with some great questions that Marsh and I are going to get into and a whole lot more. Let's get into it. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. For Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Thursday, August 5th, and I'm here with Laleem's Martian, Ross Levitan, still away on vacation. He's heading back from San Fran as we speak, actually. And if you guys want to support the show, check us out on YouTube, like and subscribe, leave a comment below. We had a lot of great listener questions. So if you guys have more questions, leave a comment on our YouTube page. And you can also find our audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get it. We got it for you. So be a friend, tell a friend about the Locked On Senators podcast and Williams Martian. Here we go. Jesus, take the wheel because Ross is not here and I'm trying to drive this bus. You got to, you had your hands on the wheel for a little bit there, just leaving the parking lot, uh, doing the intro. You nailed it, by the way. So thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Much appreciated. And uh, although I am happy to see you, I'm sad to see those beautiful blonde locks fading away, Martian. We miss, we miss uh ricky martian over here yeah i know thanks for having me pilsy and i've always wanted to do that so thanks for letting me <laughs> let me let me take the wheel there for a second ross would was... never let you take the wheel there so <laughs> like know. now this is like us like the the strict parent is away and we're like what can we get away with uh, like remember uh whenever ross couldn't set up the post uh postcast i would use the graphic you made for us and that you like and ross would change it after he's like yeah. no, no no that's not the one we use guys we do it this way but it's his uh, it's his uh, systems that work so well that keep this podcast running like a well oiled machine. But we're without him, so we're just gonna we're just gonna chalk uh, chalk things up here and shoot the shit about the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, it's like we're like the Sens after Guy Boucher got let go, right? Like the system <laughs> now the systems changed. So the Mark, sorry, welcome to your Mark Crawford years of the Locked On Senators <laughs> yeah. podcast. Oh, everyone, God. here we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but anyways, you know what? Let's let's get into the big juicy story right away. It's not sense related, but I mean, it's something that it, it, in the hockey world you gotta get into because uh, Jonathan Huberdeau, it, like it, Ross and I were laughing so much. We did that episode, the Calgary Flames tire fire sale coming up. Who is gonna get uh, sold off here, and how quickly are they gonna rebuild? Little did we know the Matthew Kachuk trade was going to happen and bring in Uyghur, Huberdeau, a first-round pick, and more. But the thing was, everyone's like, okay, that's a great trade, great win for the Flames. But if they can't re-sign uh, Uyghur and or Huberdeau, who cares, right? You're just going all in for one season, which which can work. But, I mean, you're giving up. You've lost Goudreau and uh, Matthew Kachuk in that process. But now that Huberdeau is signed... How uh, how do you see this part of the trade working out, and what do you think of that Huberto deal? Yeah, I think he, I think you got to give full credit to Brad Tree living there, right? Yeah. Like that that looked like you said it. They were heading down that road for sure of looking like they were going to, going into a full blown rebuild. But uh, I guess sen- our uh, you know Flames ownership and 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 that that group, I guess they decided that they don't they didn't want to go in that direction. I think that's probably the it would have been the easier path for them to try to you know tear it down and rebuild. And then um, you know there's excuses there for uh, you know having a, a bit of a worse season with a really good draft coming up. So I, I don't think it would have been the worst thing in the world if they would have done that. But um, they obviously have a different philosophy here, and they they still have a, a pretty good team built. Right now, I think I think getting Huberto and Uyghur in the first place was was a great job for Matthew Kachuk uh, after losing Goodrow. But man, I I really don't know. I, I you see Huberto and he's what thirty years old, and this is a very long term. I think deal. he's twenty nine. Yeah, and it's an eight uh, eight year contract at ten yeah. and a half mil. 
I mean, I guess that's what you have to kind of give a guy like him who's, you know, basically a superstar in this league. And, um, you know, he's going to be around for the next eight years. I, I wonder, though, like w when he starts, you know, slowing down a little bit, maybe in like three or four years, how bad is this deal going to look? Because by the looks of the structure, he's going to have full control, right, with the no, no move clause and um, basically being, I mean, I would say buyout proof. So um, with, with that being said, I, I, I like the gamble that they took and I, I think the fans are probably very happy about it. Um, and I'm also a little bit happy about it too, because there was a lot of chatter in, in Habs land that he was going to end up going there. Of course, with the, uh, those hometown French guys, the, the Habs fans are all over those guys when they look like they're coming to available. So, uh, it's yeah. pretty funny, but, um, yeah, we'll see. I guess, I guess we'll see how it's going to work out. Like I, it's funny seeing a guy sign for eight years when he's never played a game for that franchise. He, he's yeah. like, has he has, has he gone and checked it out? I don't know. So it's it's pretty funny, but um, I don't think we've seen him like do the press conference and put the jersey on, have we? Like it hasn't even got to that point. I don't think. No, the only thing I saw was was the video that he did selfie style where he was saying, uh, "I'm going to be wearing." I think he said number ten. Is it number ten that he's going to be wearing? Whatever it is. Yeah, I think um, so. He's like for the year. He said in that video, right? So it sounded like he was already made up his mind that he wasn't sticking around, but. I guess that was maybe a little bit of a language barrier type situation there too. Or uh, he was just saying, I'm just using this number for this year. When I lock into eight years, I'm I'm up in my number. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what the heck <laughs> is going on there, but it was pretty funny. I like I obviously Flames fans and I follow a few of them were kind of freaking out about the wording of that video, but yep. it's good to see that he's gonna be locked up there for a while. Um, no matter how it works out, I I think right now it looks good. And, and that's the thing, right? Like the the Flames, they constructed such a good team last year. They have Markstrom signed to a great deal. They like their options on defense. Like Mackenzie Weger is the fifth highest play, paid defenseman, and they don't have any, at least that I would say, bad contracts on defense. And they have a, a good unit there. And then they brought in to Foley for a, a good price uh, as a deadline piece a little earlier. So like they were really pushing to win and then you lose your top two superstars. Ross and I were talking about it. That's over 200 points. You have to find a way to bring back to your team. So they had to make a splash. I like you have to sign Huberto to this deal. But like you mentioned, I think the back half of this is going to be very, very tough to look at for Flames fans. And then you start looking at, OK, the deal Matthew Chuck signed. Uh, it was eight years at 9.5. He's only 24 years old, though. That contract's yeah. going to be over when he's 32. You're, pay you're getting him for his prime. You're paying, essentially, the Flames now are paying Huberto to fall out of his prime. I'm not saying he's out of his prime now, yeah. but you, you probably got three, four really good years left, and Huberto just had a career year. Yeah. So how's that going to work uh, in this new market where... Like, he's not going to have Barkov. He's not going to have his usual line mates, although the Calgary Flames have other great options. But for sure, I'm starting to look at this now and be like, sure, Calgary got a great haul getting Huberto and Weger. Now Huberto signed. But I think Flames fans probably wouldn't mind having Johnny Hockey or Matthew Kachuk's contract instead. Yeah, and I think I think we kind of said it too, but um, you know he he's peaking right now. He kind of just peaked yeah. right last season, and it's funny how it happens in the contract year. Of course, that's always the way. Weird. It works, right? Yeah, those guys seem to find an extra gear when it's time to get paid. But yep. Um, if I'm yeah, looking at this as as a Flames fan, sure, I'm I'm probably happy with the way the team's going to be going. You know, this season, but yep. in the long term, and and speaking at, at it from a Senators fan perspective, you know when I just saw what a, what a full rebuild can do when you bring it right down to the chassis right and you know you clear it all out and you, you get a ton of picks when you look at their roster and the guys that they have and like the upcoming ufas before they sign hoover though they could have you know at the trade deadline or even right now they they could have got rid of all of these guys and gotten first round picks for a bunch of them right and like yep like, you know markstrom Uyghur, hoover though I don't even and know. That's a, I was looking at their cap friendly Martian and a lot of their team has uh, two years left on their deal. So they have like a small window here. So like you're saying, like other than a couple guys locked in long term, they had a chance to be like, OK, there's not a lot of long term commitment here. Let's just yeah. go full scorched earth here. But I think they had to do this because Calgary Flam Flames fans watching their their brother Edmonton Oilers team get a new arena, have these shiny stars, McDavid and Drysdale sawing long term. They go to the conference finals, all these kinds of things, right? So they couldn't let th that just happen like that. So I'm I'm glad they're they're still in force here, but 
It's yeah. made for a very interesting off season. Yeah, it's it's cool that they're staying competitive because that battle of Alberta is really fun to watch right now. So yeah, uh, really good. Yeah, yeah, we weren't ready to give that up. Also, uh, when I was on Florida's cap friendly page, I totally forgot that Paul Maurice is now their head coach. That's a very interesting uh, little wrinkle as well because. I don't know that he would know that many guys on that Florida team. Yeah. I can't think of Jets players playing in Winnipeg now. Yeah. I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of anybody either, really. So So he's walking uh, into a very interesting situation over there. Yeah. It's going to be kind of a little bit of a reset for them. They could go either way, I think. Uh, Obviously, adding Kachuk is a huge add, but Huberto was a big part of that team. And I think part of that culture too, right? And him and Barkov had crazy chemistry, so... Um, we'll see how that all that turns out. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. That that uh, also, I'm I'm interested to see you know the Kachuk brothers go at it yep. three or four times this year, whatever it is, being in the same division. That's that's going to you know lead to probably Ottawa and Florida butting heads a little bit too, which will be a nice new kind of rivalry for them because whenever they play each other, it doesn't really seem like there's any bad blood at all, and it, it seems like one team is way better than the other most times. So. Um, they're kind of, I think, on level playing field here now. So it'll be it, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds as well, I think. And they can turn the narrative around. Like, I think it was always a joke. Like, oh, if you're attendance watching, just scroll down and find Ottawa versus Florida. It doesn't matter which yeah, team is that's the, home the real team, battle. And that's going to be your lowest attendance thing, right? Or it was like Sens and Yotes, right? So hopefully that changes things around. And yeah, it's going to be interesting because I think Florida – They did well bringing in Kachuk in replacement of Huberdeau. They're going to get similar type points, right, with added grit, which is what they need in the playoffs. It just seemed like they kind of fell flat in the playoffs. But losing Uyghur, I mean, that decor does not look very good anymore. So that's where I think it's going to hurt them the most, and they're going to need Sergei Bobrovsky to really hold up to that $10 million uh, AAV he's got shackled to him. Yeah, yeah, and another ten million dollar guy after like with Huberto, right? Ten point five. I think they're both making ten point five, but uh, goaltender making ten point five. That's that's crazy. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I, he had a bounce back year a bit last yeah, he year, did. Um, and Spencer Knight's right there waiting in the wings if yep. if he should falter a little bit. And I think he's a really good young goalie too. So um, their goaltending is probably the least of their worries. But you're right; it's that defense that you look at and you say there's not a whole ton of depth there. Um, and I'm not really yeah, sure correct, what kind of, yeah, what kind of prospects they have coming that could fill in there. Not either. much, uh, man. And that. they don't have a first round pick for the next like four, four years. years. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy crap. So I know. that's going to be interesting. That's for sure. But one thing I know, Liam's Martian is, oh, there I went and dropped you your, your government name, name again. <laughs> your government name again here. <laughs> um, one thing I know, Martian, is that if the Florida Panthers are going to have any success this year, they're going to need some protein. And the best spot to get protein the most delicious spot to get protein is at built bar guys summer is here the nhl players they're trying to bulk up in this off season so they're probably getting a lot of protein in but are they getting delicious protein in? that's the big difference that built bar does because they make sure their protein bars taste good then find out how to make them healthy a perfect example of that is all the built bars are covered in 100 percent chocolate so you chocolate lovers you're gonna love this and they designed protein infused marshmallows can you believe that, that martian protein infused marshmallows it is out of this world and they have so many good flavors. Like I'm on their website right now. One of their new flavors that I know I'm going to be trying is toffee almond. They got cookie dough chunk. They got coconut marshmallow, churro, brownie batter. Those all sound like delicious flavors. And I know they are. I've tried them myself. But don't just take my word for it. Martian, what do you think about Bill Pars? I love Built Bars. They're incredible. I can't believe they haven't contacted me to do a Lalim's Marshmallow, uh, you know, a Lalim's Martian Mellow. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why when I said marshmallow, I was like, Martian, Marshmallow. Yeah, Marshmallow. There's Hello. something there. So Built Bar, get, get in touch with our boy here. Maybe we can work on some new flavors, but they always have delicious flavors and so many good flavors. That's why we recommend you check out the mixed box so you can try them all. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order one more time for the people in the nosebleeds that's built.com use promo code locked for 15 percent off at built.com it's built bar the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar just like a candy bar Mm -mm -mm. 
All right, Martian. Now this is uh, this is where I got to uh, drive the bus and text on the side. I'm going to do some screen sharing. Drive responsibly. Don't do that on the road, but on a podcast. Ross does it all the time, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do it. So we are going to take a look at the listener questions that yep. people sent in. Thank you again. Thank you because uh, Ross is the ideas guy, and uh, he's not here. So uh, Williams, Marsh, and I were uh, turning the gears, trying to think of topics, and you guys helped us out immensely and the thing i like doing about this is it's the dog days of summer like if we came Now's up the time with time to do it yeah that's the thing like if we came up with something sure it's something we want to talk about but why not give the listeners what they want they you guys have helped us out so much so whatever you want to hear we're going to talk about it so let's get to some of these listener questions now i'm going to put myself at a stoplight and try to skip, share the screen here Sorry for people uh, listening. This is <laughs> yeah. not great radio, but all right. Can you see my screen now, Martian? You know what? I can see it. It's just really small. So, uh, I, oh, wait, if I go full screen. Oh, yeah, now we're good. I can see it. Okay, we're golden. Okay, okay. Yeah, it looks good. I just checked back on here. All right. So we're looking at, let's let, let's start with this one. This is, this is a classic question. It's from Ali Farat. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Who is a lesser known top four D-man the Sens can target? If not, do you see Lassie or JBD impressing so much in camp that they can slide into that role? Martian, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, lesser known. when uh, It's all the same names that we kind of hear uh, lately. I mean, Chikorin's always there, right? Uh, there, beforehand, we were hearing a little bit about Klingberg, John Marino, those type of guys that we kind of knew were, were sort of available. Uyghur as well. Um, but when you see lesser known, I think, you know, a team that's kind of off people's radar here on this one uh, might be the New York Islanders. And if you look at, um, you know, them on cap friendly and, and the rumor is that Nazem Kadri is is getting Lou lamorello right now. Right. Yep. And, you know, he's waiting for them to do something else before they can, you know, get him officially signed. Um, but that'll put them uh, pretty tight in the money. So, uh, I mean, you look at their defensive depth chart, I think a guy like maybe like a Noah Dobson or something like that could become available. So um, that's just kind of me just like spitballing and thinking about it. But um, that, that's maybe a name you could throw out there and and, and take a look at. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, Noah Dobson's an RFA right now looking for a contract, right? I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure, but maybe. I think that's where he's at. So that would be interesting because... Lou Lamorello, so famously, he just has all his deals done. He is just an absolute maniac with not letting anything leak to the public. So for all we know, Kadri could already be signed to a seven-year deal. Uh, Dobson already locked up, and uh, he's already got things figured out. So who knows with the Islanders. Now let's go to the second part of that question, though. Do you think JBD or Lassie Thompson could get a spot out of camp? Um, I, I really wish, I, I think, I, I think that they're capable and one of them would, could probably make the jump. I'm not sure which one I'd lean towards, probably Lassie a little yep. bit more so than JBD at this point. Um, but when you also look at, at who they currently have under contract, you know, with Zaitsev and Hamannick and Holden and Brandstrom, um, they would have to take one of those guys jobs. Um, and that would, that would leave a guy with a, or, that would leave two guys probably on one-way contracts up yep. in the press box, right? So in order for that to work, they would have to get rid of somebody to get last year JBD in there. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I, I agree with you right now. I'm on the side uh, or the thinking that Lassie is a little bit more pro-ready than JBD. I think JBD kind of projects better later in the future. I really still see him as being a Shabbat-type partner. He doesn't need to be your typical top four type talent but as long as he's better than the partners that Shabbat's had to deal with his entire career essentially let's be honest uh yeah. he should be doing all right and basically he just needs to play smart and, resp and responsible which I think JBD can get to that level but I just think if you start looking at that decor if one of those guys makes it in there you've got Sanderson so young Branstrom, they need to find a way to play him just to he has to be used. He can't he's not gonna be able to go up and down anymore and he needs to get ice time, so they gotta play him somehow. And then I mean, uh then you would have JBD or Lassie in there. So you're getting essentially three rookies as half of your decor on a decor that's struggled already. That's not always necessarily the best formula for yeah. success. So I think it's best for Lassie and JBD to get a little bit more time in Belleville and they need to find uh, some other veteran option that's going to work. And they still, they got to get rid of Zaitsev because I'm yeah. still so scared if they don't get rid of Zaitsev, DJ Smith's going to play him. 
Yeah, me too. I, I don't want to see uh, Nikita Zaitsev number 22 out there uh, this season at all. So hopefully hopefully they can figure something out there. I think they will. I think we should revisit this question maybe closer to October. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's the thing. Right now we're just uh, we're just speculating here. All right, I'm going to go back to the listener questions. All right, this and this is uh, this is uh, a good one for right now. The news of Norris and Cat rooming together officially makes them line mates in brackets. Hot take, and that's from Bathurstson's Hockey IQ on Twitter. Martian, you talked about this on uh, on your page. How do you feel about uh, Norris and Debrinket becoming line mates? Wow, that would be lethal. That would be lethal. That would be that would be a lot of firepower on on one line. You'd have to put them with a the playmaker like Drew, right? Like that's that's my thinking there. I don't think I don't know necessarily if Batherson would be a good fit with those two guys. I don't even know if those two guys would have chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's that's another thing that they're going to have to figure out in camp, but when you do it that way, it's kind of it's kind of crazy to look at, right? Like th- that's potentially like those two guys, 35, 40 goal scorers, both of them. So putting them on the same line, I, I don't necessarily think that's a great idea. I like I like the idea of having a goal scorer on on two lines, um, but again, that that would that would leave a really great second line as well with with Stutzla, yeah. Kachuk, and and Batherson, Batherson if, yeah. if, if we put Drew with them. So again, we're just premature line projeculation here uh but uh yeah it's fun to think about the combinations that they could put in the top nine yeah that's the thing like good, good problems now i personally i would split norrison to bring it up just so you can have an elite sniper on each line i think that's great not that uh like timmy or batherson can't uh, absolutely snipe but those guys like you said we're looking at i i think it's fair to say 35 goals for norris and 40 for to bring it and that's that's probably on the low side. Like that's probably pretty conservative. Norris hit that 35 goals in 66 games, and yeah. Brinkett's already hit 40 goals twice already. So that's pillsy conservative uh, yeah. thinking. It's like right every there. time they go on the ice, they're scoring a goal. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's the thing. So, so it's looking pretty good from that from that stance. Um, da, 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 da. Hey, hey Pilsy, what about that question about the shootout lineup? Yeah, Remember, I, yeah, I'm actually I'm could... going to that one right now. I, I want to okay. give uh, the person some t- some shine time here. So for sure, there we go. If you're watching on YouTube, go sends go. Nice, love it. Yep, at go sends go underscore twelve asks. Who are your first five shooters in the shootout this season and in what order? I love this question because, oh, did it not share? Oh, okay, no, we're sharing. We're sharing. Um, I love this question because the order matters. The order matters in my mind. So, Martian, I'll let you go first and uh, then I'll hit you with my list here. Okay. All right. My list goes like this. Okay. Do I, do you want my reasoning first or, do, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll give my reasoning as I go here. Okay. Yeah, and I'll tell you if I match or not. Okay, I'm go- I'm leading off with the Brinkett right away. Ooh, I think that okay. I, I think that you know he's a really good first option. He's got a good chance to score every time. He's got great mitts, uh, and and he he can score any given moment. And you kind of want to start off the shootout, obviously, with a with a good chance to score. Um, so I'm gonna and you don't want to put the you know the pressure of the third spot on the new guy right away. So I'm gonna go with the Brinkett number one. All right, here I'll give you some stats to back up why why that's smart. Uh, last year. He had four shootout goals in five shootout attempts. Nice, 80%. Yeah. And career, he's had uh, 46.7% uh, success rate in the yeah, shootout. That's, so that's ridiculously good. Starting off hot with a guy that has good success, I, I, I like it, Martian. I like it. Not what I have, but I like it. Continue. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Brinkett number one. And then number two, I'm going to go with Josh Norris. He's our other kind of, you know, s- sniper type guy. Um, I don't have any stats to back this up, Pilsy, so I'm glad that you have it all pulled up there. Preparation, so you can, you can Pilsy, I got it here. Yeah, prepare, Pilsy, preparation. Okay, that's great. Uh, so I think Norris's numbers in the shootout are pretty good too, if I'm not mistaken, just thinking off the top of my head, maybe? They're not They're not great. Uh, he, ha- he had one goal and three shootout attempts last season. Keep in mind, the Sens didn't have a lot of shootouts uh, no. last year, so not a lot of um, sample size here. But then we look at his career and his career, he's 33.3% success rate. So, I mean, one out of three ain't half Not bad. terrible. Um, you know what? I want the guys who are put on this earth to bury pucks to go in the shootout. So I'm I'm going I'm going to stick with them uh, there at this in my second spot. Yeah, I'm not going to fault you for getting two of the team, two of two of the leagues 
best snipers one and two here. So I won't fault you there. Great. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> and then, and then in my third, my third spot, uh, I'm going to go with Timmy. Tim, nice. Tim Stutzla is, is, uh, you know, he, the Sens have relied on him in the shootout in the past. He's got a good amount of experience over the last couple of years doing it. Um, probably I would guess like just slightly higher than Norris, probably percentage wise, Pilsy. Is that, that probably accurate? So do you want uh, last season or, or career? Let's go career. Career, he's a 50% shooter, four for eight. Lovely. Okay. Last so year, he had two, uh, two out of five. Yeah, that dog will hunt as the third shooter because, um, you know, the third sh- that sh- third shot, a lot of the time, the game kind of comes down to that third shooter. Um, so I want a guy who who's going to, you know, take that take that spot seriously and, and try something good that's going to, you know, make a goalie bite and get the goal. So uh, Timmy's my guy at number three. And then, I mean, the last two, I don't really matter as much because it, it doesn't, it rarely happens where a shootout goes to, yeah. you know, the fourth and fifth shooter. Um, but I'll, I'll go with Batherson and then Kachuk for those last two shots. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like Kachuk at the end just because Kachuk, like it's all vibes. Like his shootout stats yeah. are, uh, are not good. Uh, he went 0 for 3 last year and he is a career 0 for 5. That's good for 0% for those uh, calculating at home. Yeah. So not great. But if the vibes are up and the team needs a win, like He's, yeah. he's your captain. He's your leader. You have to give him the opportunity to do that. So so I respect that. My list goes like this. I got Drake Batherson uh, starting things off. Um, he was same as Norris, one for three last year. But I just think what I like about Batherson is he's going to get the goalie moving. Like he's going to get the goalie thinking and like he's going to get in his head right away. So I think it's good to shake the goalie up first one. And uh, Batherson, we've, we've got to see him pull off some pretty incredible stuff before. So I'm going Batherson first. Then I'm going Timmy, keep the goalie guessing, keep the goalie moving. Then yep. third, like you mentioned, it's it's important. It's on the line. I'm going to brink it just because uh, after the stats I looked up, he has good success on the shootout. He's your sniper. And now for my last two, or do you want to jump in before I hit you with the last well, two? Well, I was going to say, oh, I'm sure, I'm, I'm guessing that this guy's going to make your list because I kind of overlooked him a little bit, but neither of us have Claude Giroux in our, in our top three there. I know, and I looked at... Uh, I looked at his stats. They didn't amaze me. I'll quickly check uh, check again here. But yeah, he went 0 for 4. And, and talk about sample size here. 29% career shootout. He has 30 goals in 103 oh. attempts. So yeah. So I kind of left him off the list there. And just because when it's a shootout, you want to see the young guns flash, right? So that's for sure. Pills, that's but, where I went. How crazy is it that if a shootout gets to the sixth shootout, shooter our guys Claude Giroux <laughs> yeah yeah honestly yeah it goes, you know, goes that far down that's the list. pretty but good now my four and five four is Norris just because yeah when you get a shot like that and no defense pretty good uh pretty good odds he's gonna figure it out and then last this is for the people Zub Zub, Zub. you it. knew it already you knew yeah. it yeah you gotta get Zub in there like if you're at the fifth shooter like you said it doesn't happen that often if you're already at the fifth shooter get Zub in there he pulled off some magic that i'm sure Leafs fans will remember uh in that game when he got out of the penalty box and did that for silky sure smooth I, I, deke. on a uh, in a home game to have him at a home game you gotta do it yes yeah you know you've heard it where the the zoobs just rain down when he scores and and if if he's got a shootout attempt it's gonna be they're gonna be zooming the entire time that he's he's got the puck on his the goalie won't be able to think that'll be a lot of fun yeah they'll be they'll be like what the hell is going on (laughs) yeah exactly yeah so so that's how i uh see things shake out there that that's a fun one that was a that was a good question by by ghost let's go there all right now there's definitely one more I want to get in here. Oh, th- this is a this is a good one, and uh, this is from our good buddy Maddie Perth Sense. What's up, Maddie? Yep, always uh, man, always Maddie. a good engagement here. So Maddie Perth Sense at True Fan Net. Yeah, at True Fan Net. Sorry, I lost my spot there for a second. I got my Norris jersey. My question for you, fine gentlemen: What jersey is next on your list? A whole bunch of question marks and exclamation points. Discuss. Martian, you have the floor. Yeah. So uh, the only one I own currently is, is uh, of the new jerseys is is Brady Kachuk. And it's the, it's the black version, the home jersey. So, you have a C uh, on that one or no? No. I see, you know what? I bought it too early and it's got an A on it. So I, that I might be worth keeping. Yeah. Uh, that's it's cool. Nice. 
It's cool. Yeah. You know, it'll be like the people who used to wear the, the Elfie jerseys with the A on it. Those were kind of rare to see too, yep. but um, yeah, I, I may or may not get that changed. That's not a big deal either way. It's a beautiful Jersey. Um, so depending on what the re reverse retro looks like too, though. Um, STs also. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to get to that question we later. What we're, what we're thinking um, for that looking Jersey, but um, I'm, I'm I'm really considering getting a Jake Sanderson. I think nice. you know how he's looking, and I I honestly think I'm, the eighty number eighty five is kind of growing on me. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, and and I think that would it would look great in the white jersey, which is the one I'm okay. missing, right? So we'll see if the reverse retro is one that I really like. I'll I'll probably go Sanderson. Um, but either way, it's going to be Sanderson. And if the reverse retro is maybe not something that's tickling my fancy, I'll I'll probably just get the white one, which is also pretty clean. Nice. And if you do get the white one, still Sanderson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I'm I'm in a similar boat. Uh, I've already got the black one. Um, you see behind me, let's see if I can get the point right. Oh, yeah, got it right. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, behind me, I've got a, the old white one, but I want to get a new one. So white would be mine. And Ross and I were talking about this. It We both are looking at white Giroux jerseys. But the whole bring Drew home and then not getting his jersey on a home jersey. I mean, the whites used to be the home, so we'll we'll pull that little loophole. But Drew with the white just just feels so that good. That would and look sick. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of those. I guarantee it. That's going to be a lot of people's probably second jersey by uh, uh, since they've changed it. Right, is going to be the Drew. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, so that's what I'm choice. thinking. Or if like if Ross goes Drew and I want to switch it up. Either I'll go to break it, which is risky. A guy with only one year left on yeah. the field. A uh, risky, risky. Or, man, I got to get a goalie jersey. I don't have a goalie jersey, so oh, maybe yeah. I'll go Forzy. Forzy's nice. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah, I, I like that too. And I, probably the other one that I would consider would be would be Norris because yeah. I just lo I love the player. I think he's awesome. Everything he does just is great. Like his athleticism out there is awesome to watch. Um, so maybe, maybe I'd go with him too in the white, I think would be really good. And that's a nice safe pick, right. With him being locked up for the right. next eight years. So Brady Kachuk's best friend. You, you get your money's worth out of that Jersey for sure. So I'd, I'd probably, you know, between, it's between Sanderson and Norris for me. Uh, maybe I just changed my own mind. I might, I might be a Norris guy. Yeah. That's the thing. Like obviously Sanderson's still under team control, but Norris, you get that nice warm comfort of the long-term extension. So so that yeah. definitely and is you know nice. he's bon you know he's he's bona fide you know you, Sanderson I'm sure is going to be a stud but yeah um, you never know yeah that's the thing Josh Norris just put up 35 goals in the show that feels yeah. that feels good yeah, yeah exactly so there there's us looking at uh, some next jerseys now just as we tease we're going to take a little break here and then we're going to get into some reverse retro jersey talk which uh, has been hot in the streets that's for sure and Martian speaking of the streets. When we come back from this break, we're going to see if you have anything from the street to go, like get your ear down to the sidewalk and uh, listen to the pavement for us because uh, fans have been asking if you've got anything more left in the street. So we'll be right back after the short break. All right, Martian, we're back. That was uh, some great listener questions. And yes, we're going to fire things up with the final question. Just got to find it here. It was one about the reverse retro jerseys. We want to give the fans a shout out. Actually, while, while I'm looking for this, I want to give him a shout out too. So I won't just scroll. I will share the screen also if you're watching on YouTube. Because this was a good one. And it's it's very on brand for you. This one's from Nick Spence at WhiskeyNick95. If you could choose one beer for the CTC to have on tap, what would it be, Martian? <laughs> I'm on record already as uh, saying that I'm a, I'm a Molson guy when I'm at the CTC. Although I haven't had a you know a beer in in about two and a half months, three months almost. You're just uh, on the healthy waters. I'm just I'm drinking health drinks, just vodka health sodas drinks. now. But I'll I'll be back I'll be back on the wagon probably uh, once we get to the CTC. There's just something about a Molson draft when you're there that like it just hits different, man. It's you know it's. There's something about it. I don't know if maybe the lines are dirty or something. You just you tend to, <laughs> you tend, you tend to feel them a little bit more. You get years um, of flavor in those yeah, ones, they, eh? They put me in the right mood too. So I'm I'm really thinking like you know you get a little rowdy. You get a couple of those into you. There's you know that video of me going around with two of them in my hands and those <laughs> those probably didn't last too long. So I'm a, I'm a Molson guy. Give me those Molson Canadians, nice and cold, crispy, cold, foamy beers. 
Let's go. Pilsy, that's the answer. I, I love it. Yeah. And there's not much uh, more iconic than the Martian tweets. When this tweet comes out, it's going to be a good day. When you say it's a bad day to be a Molson. Oh, that's that gets that gets me fired up just thinking about it it's a bad day to be a Molson Since so. game days are always a bad day to be a Molson Canadian around me exactly look out that's for sure now mine a little shameless plug uh, as you guys may know I work at a brewery here in Collingwood so I'm just gonna plug them real quickly Black Bellows Brewery if I had my choice they got a beach freak that's a pale ale nice tropical flavors you get your stone fruit flavors a little bit of strawberry notes the ultimate summertime beer so when the sends are in the playoffs in summertime i wish they would have black bellows beach freak but that was just a little shameless plug there now my mouth just started watering when you when you're, when you're talking about that <laughs> yeah hey i can I can, I can sell a beer or two. I've, I've been known to sell <laughs> yeah. a beer or two. So hey, if you're in the Blue Mountains, Collingwood area, come see me at Black Bells. We can chat beer and sense. I you would know love I that. Will. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't find the listener question, so I feel bad. This is where me texting and driving the bus doesn't work out. Uh, so sorry for the listener that we couldn't find your question. But the question was, as we teased, what kind of uh, ideas are you guys looking at for the reverse retro Martian? I'll go through our uh, conversation uh, the ones we chatted to each other. So yeah. this is one that we looked at. There's a common theme for all the reverse retros that we like. Yeah. You see that one there? Yeah, that that one, uh, it, it, I'll just describe it for the people here. It's, it's yeah. you remember the black Senegoth jersey with the, the, old, the old Senegoth logo? It was kind of a, a wonky looking logo, but um, beautiful jersey. And, and this was a jersey that was worn, you know, when the Sens were really rolling as a team yeah. too with the golden laurels and the shiny gold trim and the, the red sleeves and the black jersey. It was just a dirty look. Just looked awesome on the ice. So um, it's that jersey, but with the new logo on the front. And uh, I think that would be a really good uh, move. It kind of plays to that reverse retro theme too, right? They're just reversing the logo instead of the colors. Yep. Um, I don't think this jersey would work in white. Um, although we do have one that we're going to tease pretty soon that looks uh, pretty similar that – um, that could work, uh, but the, the, I really think like sticking with that black theme, um, you can wear them at home. Um, I really, I really like the look of, of this one. Yeah, I mean the nostalgia in me is like screaming right now, like love this the Senegoth. But the thing is, yeah, it's literally, and you could you could even tell it's kind of like photoshopped in a way that it's literally the exact same jersey, just swapped logos, which is fine. Reverse retro, just reversing uh, the logos there. So I, I like the idea of this one, but it, it's not the one for me. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and it was a quick Photoshop job, uh, Pilsy. I when you asked me the question, I, I popped that one together real quick for you. Oh, that was you. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. Hey, don't worry about it. No, no, I'm not offended at all. You're right. It, it's exactly what I did. You called it out. Okay. Good. 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 Sorry about that, Martian. <laughs> um, all right. Moving on to. Did you design this one too before I shit talk it? Uh, I don't know. Pull it up. Let's see. Okay. All right. So. I don't think so. I might have, might have done it a quick. Oh yeah, maybe I did do this one too. Um, All right, Martian, describe it for the listeners. Actually, I know I don't think I did, but anyways, yeah, it, it's the same kind of concept, but we're going back to the Senegoth look with the with the golden laurels, but they flip yeah. the colors. So the main color of this jersey is red, and it's got the black sleeves and the gold trim, um, and then they they kept the old logo on there as well, the old Senegoth logo. So. Um, I kind of like this because you're changing the colors up a bit, right? You're going from the black to the red, and we don't have that that solid red jersey right now uh, for the Sens. And I really like the shoulder patches that they went with too, with the the, the Parliament um, shoulder patch, the the maple leaf on the one side and the Parliament on the other. Um, I like this jersey, but there's something about the the logo and the on top of red that doesn't really work because yeah. you know, like the because the guys what do you call that it's like basically the broom on the top of the guy's head uh the spark kind of clashes there yeah it doesn't really like it it almost looks like it's the same color so it doesn't really work too great but i like the idea of it for sure i think this would also work with the new logo as well yeah that's the thing i look i love the senegoth nostalgia but let's keep that one in the past i think it's best uh, in yeah. the past and it's funny to look at and be like jesus that's what we were going with back in the day but it, it is fun but the the thing i don't like about this jersey design is i'm with you i like the shoulder patches but you, i feel like you need some color on the shoulder as well like all that red like there's yeah. some, 
something needs to divide it up, whether you make the shoulder, um, like whether you make this part here, like black or gold, I'm not sure, but it just feels like something needs to be done there. eh? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It, it, it's not really a complete looking design here. I don't think. Yeah, so this graphic designer, absolute garbage. Uh, <laughs> not as good as the previous one. I'm I a terrible graphic me, so designer. So you just might have, you might have just bashed a stranger on the internet, but like I, I've done so many mock jerseys over the past like three years online that I don't even remember which which ones are mine and which ones aren't. So yeah, that's totally fair. Now I'll try to find this one. I tried to do a uh, like screenshot where the person had credit here. So yeah, I'll this next one is is really good. This this, this is the one. one. This is the one for me. Yeah, I like this one. And if you're listening, Leems Martian can uh, can give you the rundown again. I'll, I'll just give a quick shout out to Zub Enjoyer at Sens PLS Win. Sens Please Win. Oh, I'm glad I got that. I'm glad <laughs> I got that. <laughs> that would have been a bad look otherwise. Thank you, Zub Enjoyer. Now, graphic designer Martian, take it away with the description. Yeah, this this one's really interesting because it's different from kind of any any sense design that we've probably ever seen. Uh, but there are elements that are that are very similar, right? The the, the big difference that you're seeing here is that the shoulders are uh, separated color from the main color of the jersey. That's what I like, yep. So the main color of the jersey is white, kind of on the torso and and uh, you know upper arm area. But then the shoulders are red, and then the bottom sleeves are also red, kind of like those old. Um, you know, early early 2000s through the 90s kind of uh, design where the, the Sens had the dark sleeves on the white jersey. But instead of being black this time, they're red. And yeah. then the thing that really pops for me here is the reversal of the laurels, right? Where usually it's a, it's a, it's a gold band with um, black, sort mm -hmm. of like those black sort of laurel triangles uh, running through it. But this one has a black band and the gold laurels going across it. So it I mean, it it pops for sure. It looks beautiful. If they go with something like this, like like what I was saying earlier, that's a must cop for me. Yeah, um, I think that Great. one look that one will look awesome just walking down the streets and and whatnot and wearing to the CTC and hell, it would look really cool on the ice too, right? With the with the black pants, right? With something like that, yep. like holy crap, man, that would look awesome. So, um, whoever made this one, did a hell of a job. It looks job. like it's from Reddit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think about the gold font? Yeah, like I mean, uh, it's, Dean it's Brown might not it's like different. it. Might, yeah, it might be tough to see for yeah, true. play by play guys, maybe if it doesn't have more of a kind of a dark outline around it. But yeah, the gold numbers is another thing that we don't really see very often either. So I'm on board with this one, Pilsy. This is your pick. So uh, nice yeah. job. I like this one. The only thing, and graphic designers, again, I'm not a graphic designer, so maybe I'm totally wrong here, but maybe outline the gold lettering in black rather than the red. Yeah, I think I think that's right. probably a good call out. Yeah, make it a little sharper, clear. Yep, yep. You could even probably do double, right? You could do the red outline and then outline it again and black again. It would Ooh. probably work even well too, right? Yeah, nice. that, that's something you can do. So I, I think I think that's a good suggestion. But all in all, really good design there. Yeah, exactly. And and I was just imagining imagining those would look great on the ODR too. Oh yeah, yeah. Very very good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't know. There's something about that one. I, I think that I hope I hope the Sens are paying attention to kind of these mock-ups and seeing what the fans are hoping for and, and, and they execute something like that. The last one was nice because it was kind of just a reversal of their current jerseys in the red. But I think they can get a little more creative this time and, and we'll give them a break if it's not if it's not something, you know, perfect. And that's the thing. Like there was one common theme in that is the laurels must come back. Like I don't, I don't care what logo they use, what jersey concept, all that kind of stuff. If there's no laurels, we riot. Yeah, and and the the other thing that we didn't see it at all there was the the O, right? Yeah. And I think I know that that's one that a lot of fans are hoping can can make its way back as well. I don't know, maybe an O with the laurels. I don't know how that would look, but. Um, yeah, uh, that's interesting. And, and this match of everything kind of all pushed together. <laughs> that's the thing. You're really mixing things up there. But I don't know if I'd have to look at the era that the O era is. I don't know if that's what I want to be remembering. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Like, yeah. I mean, dark, dark Ross ending. would be able to tell us w when exactly it started because my mind's blanking on that right now. But in my head, the the go with the O was a, was a weird time in Sen's fandom. And 
I'm I'm ready to move past that, and I want to stick like that. The logo we have now, the one that's on the jersey behind me, and the uh, the thing right here, like that, that's just such a good logo. It's hard to turn away from that. Yeah, in my mind. So Pilsy's saying no to the O. And say case. say no to the O. Yeah, I've had yeah. I've had enough of the O. Let's let we'll say that for now. Um, Martian, speaking of the O, Ottawa. What what are the streets saying? What are the streets yeah. telling you? You were you were bang on with uh, your your latest one. Um, yeah, Mark Flood. Mark right? Mark Flood. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, becoming a scout. So that's great. Yeah, had that one a few weeks early. Thank you very much to the Not streets. Not a big deal. Uh, the people are always very kind to sharing information from the, from the you know the, the depths down here with all of us peasants. So um, <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah, and then and then the one I had today too was another good one, right? I I, I yep. believe this to be true as well, just based on you know the source that I had. And uh, sounds like the Brinkat and uh, Norris will be living together this season. And awesome. you know, actually, Pilsy, this might be a good topic for us to kind of talk about. Is is there was no real clarity on whether DeBrincat's, you know, young family is going to be joining him this season right. in in Ottawa. You know, if he's going to be moving with Norris, I, I think it's kind of assumed here that um, they may not be coming with him to Ottawa right away here. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of concern amongst fans when I posted that, that, you know, wh- why isn't his family coming? Should we be worried about this? Is this a red flag? Blah, 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 blah. Um, so maybe maybe I can get you, you know, what's your opinion on that? I, uh, what are you thinking? I, yeah, and as far as the streets go, there's nothing really else going on. I'll, I'll let I'll let you know on my Twitter as soon as I hear anything that I think right. is legit. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything for you. Sorry. All right. Well, hey, we we gotta ask when when you have an insider like at Lalim's Martian on your show, you gotta <laughs> yeah. try to dig right. Like the fans would be upset with me if I don't try to pull something out of the streets here. But hey, as far as far as your question goes, like I I'm not concerned. I would say it's probably and maybe I'm wrong on this completely, but my kind of intuition is it's, it's probably normal for a lot of NHL players to have their newborn stay in their home base location while they're off, right? Like it's it's where the, uh, the spouse is comfortable. You know, they've got their house they're comfortable in. They've got all their baby equipment. There's a lot of equipment to, <laughs> to have a newborn around. So you don't have to lug all that around with you. And then, you know, then to bring it, he's not kind of uh, just, I don't want to say distracted. That's a, that's a bad term, but he's not distracted by having a newborn at home, uh, keeping him up all night kind of thing when he's trying to get acclimated to a new team in a contract year, right? So, yeah. and, and plus, not only are you switching cities, you're switching countries too which uh for some people uh, raising their kids that's that's a big deal i'm not saying one way or another but sometimes that does uh, play a factor because i believe he lives in michigan in the off season uh, as he said on wally mathot's show so it, it's a big deal to move a newborn baby like that i don't think it indicates that he doesn't have long-term plans i wouldn't go as far to say that i would just say it's a newborn and moving a newborn anywhere anytime is probably a lot of work i don't know from experience so yeah, yeah. Neither of us have kids, so we're kind of speaking out of our asses here. But yeah, yeah but no, honestly, like I, I can imagine as well, right? Like their support systems, her support systems yep. are all around her there too. That's the other thing that you didn't really touch on there is is they would have to kind of move too to make everything work and be comfortable here. I I, I understand why they're not coming. I think it makes a ton of sense. And and I think for anybody who's worried about it, just don't. Don't worry yeah. about it. I think I think everything's fine. Um, and Michigan's not that far. That's the thing, right? So yeah. like he can go home and like he can he can see his family and they can visit him and stuff like that, right? So yeah, exactly. So yeah, no concern there on my end either. All right, good. No, no concern. All good vibes. That was uh that was that was great, Martian. I, I at first uh, I woke up today and I was like, what are we gonna get into? There's uh, Ross uh, isn't here to tee us up, but Look, we got two hands on the wheel here. We drove this bus. I was texting and driving. We got to listener questions. I shared the screen. I shouted people out. So uh, I feel like I did enough. We hit all the ads. Like we're we're golden here. We're driving off into the sunset now. Uh, any anything else you want to wave goodbye to to the listeners before we head out here? Not like we're you're you're leaving for a long time. We're gonna have you on uh, throughout <laughs> the rest of the summer summer for sure. But uh, anything else you got before I do my little wrap up here? No, it just just maybe a little like I know how you guys like to do these like verbal meme, right? Paul oh, Rudd, verbal meme, okay. Paul Rudd, me and you, look at us. Who would have thought, right? Yeah, like, we can do this without Paul or without Ross. Here we go. Hey, <laughs> we we don't even remember the guy's name. It was, yeah, who's Ross Levitan? We don't need yeah. this guy. No, yeah. uh, oh no, we we miss Ross obviously, but um, I think yeah, we did all right. Hey, 
50 minutes, Pilsy. Like, look at us go, buddy. We could get, we could go all day, I look think. Us. Look at us. Look get at us a couple of uh, those cold Molsons and a couple of those, uh, what was it, blowing bellows, spears? Black bellows, you, close. Black bellows. <laughs> <laughs> get us a couple of those and we could go all day. Oh, yeah, we, we really could. And uh, we have plans for the postcast that I'll let Ross uh, tease later, but we got some good plans. Uh, we're trying to maybe get get a, a crew together, so mm-hmm. that'll be interesting. We'll see who we're, we're looking at for the roster there. But, uh, yeah, the postcast is going to be back better than ever. We're fired up for that. And, um, yeah, that's it for, for us on episode 612 of the Locked On Centers podcast. For myself, Brandon Piller, for the Martian at Laleem's Martian, the insider, the king of the streets, we thank you for <laughs> listening it, to this episode of the Locked On Senators podcast. Your team. Your team every day. There it is. Your team every damn day.